Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part 11, and we're going to be talking about how to create animated sprites. So here is our player scene. And in our art folder, we have all the art for the idle, the jumping, and the running animations. And we just want to use those to make this character look animated. Well, that means we can't use the plain old sprite. What we're going to use instead is the animated sprite. And we could add that node, but a shortcut here is we can right click on this and say change type. And I want to change it into an animated sprite. Okay, so now all the textures have gone away, and we have a warning here a sprite frames resource must be created. Right? Our animated sprite needs to know what frames it's going to use. So that's the first property right here, frames. So click the down arrow and choose new, and then click the right arrow to go into that frame, and you're gonna see a new panel open up here. So over here, you can define multiple animations. Over here in this section, you're going to put the individual frames in the order you want them. And over here, you're gonna put the speed how fast you want that animation to play and whether you want it to loop or not. So let's start with idle. The idle animation just uses these two frames. So I'm going to drag them into the animation frames window here. And now if we go to our sprite, we have a property here called playing. So we turn that on. And there you see it playing. OK, now I think that's a little fast. So if we click back into the animation frames, we can change the speed here to, say, 3. And there we go. Now let's talk about adding the running frames. There's six frames to that animation. So we're going to click on New Animation. We'll call this Running. And then I'm going to select all of these and drag them into there. There we go, we got one through six. And back to our sprite. Right here, this animation property is which one of those animations we want to use. So if I switch it to running, now we've got the running animation. And I think that one needs to be sped up just a little bit. And it'll, it'll all depend on what it looks like once we see it, but you get the idea. So now in our code, what we're going to need to do is tell the animated sprite node which of these animations to play when we're running to use this one and when we're standing still to use that one. And then we're also going to use our flip H property to change which direction it's running or standing in. OK, so here we are in our player script. And I've added a reference to the sprite node. So we can use this as the name. And we're just going to add a new variable for which animation we're going to be using, idle or running. And then in our fixed process, this is where we're going to choose which one to use. I'm going to set the animation. So first of all, if our x velocity is equal to 0, then the animation we're going to use is the idle one. Otherwise, we're going to use the run one. That's pretty simple. But now we need to detect the, uh, or we need to choose the flip h, whether we want it to be facing to the right or facing to the left. So if um, vel.x is greater than 0, then we're running to the right. So our sprite needs to be set to, we need to set flip h to false. So that's the normal direction is facing to the right. And then if it's less than 0, We'll do the same thing, but we'll set flip h to true. 
Notice this way, if when we stop moving, the flip age won't change, so we'll stay facing the direction we were already going. Then we just need to tell our uh, sprite to play whatever animation we're supposed to be playing. And that's all fine, except you're going to notice something a little bit weird. So I can run back and forth. When I stop, I am not going back to idle, am I? I'm sort of staying in the running state. And the reason for that is we said to switch to idle if velocity x is 0. But velocity x is slowly getting smaller and smaller. But it is a floating point number, and it's never going to be exactly 0. So what we need to do is we need to set basically a minimum speed threshold to stop moving. So if the velocity x is less than, say, 10, we make our velocity x equal to 0. And that way, that last little invisible bit of coasting that's happening is going to make us stop. So there's also these jump animations where we have a an image for when the player is falling downwards and one for when they're jumping upwards. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to leave that for you to experiment with. See if you can figure out how a good way to add those into animations here. Remember you can set, the hint here is you can set loop to off here and you can actually set in the properties you can set what frame you want to be on. So if it's not playing you can say use frame 0, use frame 1. And then that might help you figure out how to choose between the up and the jumping up and the falling images. What I'm going to do is make these platforms look a little better. So in our art folder, we have a nice grass block here that we can use. It's a 64 by 64 image. So our platform, if, if we drag that in, it's going to be all stretched and ugly, right? Because we scaled it. So let's bring that back to 1 for the moment. So that's that's our grass block. But I don't really want it to just be this big. I want to be able to make it however wide I like. And the way we're going to do that is by going into the texture and making sure we have repeat selected and mip maps selected. Then go back to your sprite and select region. And now you'll see that the sprite has sort of disappeared, right? That's because we need to tell it what the region rectangle is, right? Well, we know the height is 64 because that's how big our tile is, but we want it to be wider. Let's say I wanted it 10 tiles wide. Let's just type 10 times 64. And there you go. Now you have a 640 wide tile, and it just repeats. Let's turn off the collision for a second. And it just repeats the tile over and over again that many times. So super handy. And then we just need to make sure our collision matches. Our collision shape matches the size. It's a little too small because we were running 32 before. So we'll increase that. And now our platforms are going to look much nicer to run around on. And finally, let's just make the background look a, bit, a little bit better, too. Background is very simple. We've got a texture here for that. And on the main, we're just going to add a sprite to hold it. And we're going to put that first because we want it to be behind everything else. Drop that in the texture. And there we go. This is a really big image. So as you drag it around, it's going to take up a lot of space. So we can 
scale it as well. All right, if you want it a little bit smaller, more like the screen size, you put it like that. And then you can do the same thing, by the way, with the backgrounds with the region. And if you want it to repeat and have a, you know, if you have a scrolling background, you just want to have it repeat over and over again. But that's something we will get to in a later video. But there we go with a nice background behind our platforms. Okay, thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.